what's up? It's Raptor Jesus here. Uh, I thought today we would talk about uh, dungeon procedures, exploring the dungeon. And I think the very first important thing is your marching order. Uh, what order is your party marching? Who's in front? Who's in the rear? That kind of thing. And this is important because when an encounter happens, be it a monster or a trap, uh, Whoever is standing where is going to be extremely important for the Dungeon Master when he determines when you've sprung something. Uh, it also avoids a lot of arguments of like, oh no, I was like standing over here by the door like 35 feet away. <laughs> and stuff like that. And the next part is mapping, which is... I know these days it's kind of controversial as much as reading anything is. <laughs> but I think there's a few ways you can do it. Now, if you're using miniatures, uh, I actually have a really cool system where uh, if you're using dungeon tiles and everything, you just you give the players the dungeon tiles, and when you're describing the rooms and the hallways, they're laying it out on the table. And this is very important. One, I just love uh, cutting work out of my end that's kind of like silly like laying out dungeon tiles and worrying about all that stuff. You let the players do it, it's kind of like they're mapping anyway. But you know, it's more uh, tactile and I think they ha it has more of an impact on them because they're handling toys, which is very important, <laughs> even as adults. And it also avoids the gripes I usually hear from my players whenever I ask them to map or anything like that. And you can designate a player still as the mapper, they're the one that gets to lay out the tiles, and depending on how your party is, how your group is anyway, not your party, uh, how the group is, they, they might actually like fight over who gets to do it, or they take turns. I have found that uh, it's more engaging giving them all the tiles and stuff and, and laying it out. And you can, and if you're a cra DM crafter, uh, you can make like uh, like I have specific like lengths of hallways and just say long hallway short hallway instead of laying out like specific dimensions which can be a little bit jarring I suppose for some people and then the next bit is of course like movement and how movement works and I love dungeon turns. I think it's. I have actually applied them to many different game systems because I just like the idea of. Oh, how long does that take? Like 10 minutes probably? And so, dungeon turn is 10 minutes. How long does it take to search a 10 by 10 foot room? 10 minutes. You know, how long does it take to search a wall for traps or secrets or anything? It's like 10 minutes. I just love that metric. You know, how long does it take to pick a lock? Huh? Probably 10 minutes. <laughs> you know how long does it take to bash a door? Probably about 3 minutes. Maybe a little bit less if the door is really weak. And that's, that's sort of the important thing is 10 minutes. You don't really have to get down to the nitty gritty of movement even though when you're exploring you can move about 120 feet. Uh, unless you're like really encumbered. And that's also a cautious movement, because that movement is you're cautiously moving essentially like 12 feet every minute. <laughs> so that's very, uh, so you're able to pay attention to what's going on around you and take in your surroundings more when you're moving cautiously like that. You can move faster down the dungeon, but then I wouldn't give you any sort of hear noise rolls or a chance to surprise people, which brings into another point is light. If you're walking on a torch or a lantern, you're not going to surprise anyone, unless the creature's blind. Because <laughs> the light is just going to give you away. So there's, if you're wanting to have the rogue and or thief, sorry, I know it's a thief. <laughs> if you're going to have a thief or anyone like that sneaking around, you can't be having a light source. You got to put your torches out. Which just adds more to the tension, because you're not going to be able to see anything coming up on you. And torches will last about 
six turns, which is also important and goes into another one of my points, is resting. So every five turns, their characters need to take a ten minute rest. You, know, you need to go to the bathroom, you need to eat a little bit of your biscuits, or drink some water, you know, adjust your equipment, that type of thing, take a breather. You've been walking around for 50 minutes in a dungeon in a very slow and highly intense situation. So if you don't take that uh, rest on the sixth uh, turn, then your characters will have a minus one on attack and some attack rolls and damage until they rest again. You don't really need to make this penalty cumulative because minus one is huge in old school games. 18 strength only gives you a plus 3 bonus. If you had a minus 1, you'd be like a character with 15 strength, which is horrible when you're an 18 strength muscle bound meathead, right? <laughs> so it's uh, it's important to, I think, use this rest turn. I think a lot of people I know don't. I even play under some DMs that do not use this, but. I think it's because they're worried about like playing it out. You don't need to play this out. You say, are you guys resting? No? Alright, let's move on. Mark my little minus one on you guys because you're, you're starting to get fatigued and stuff. So I don't think it's too much of a big deal. It's not like there's too many things you're keeping track of. And I think it's important to uh, add that sense of exploration. Like you're taking time. You know, and you have to also think about like dungeon ecology is these living creatures, where are they going to the bathroom, where are they eating, where are they storing their food and sleeping and stuff like that. And so the players can actually utilize those spaces for themselves. You know, once they take out that goblin tribe or the orc clan and so on. And the next important part is traps, which I am unsure how the best way to handle traps, but I like using traps in one of two ways. As an obstacle, like a pit, or as something that during a surprise encounter, the monsters will spring on the players. So there's levers and activation switches that then the players can also use for themselves. So I don't like having the haha gotcha you stepped on my hidden square on my dungeon map you had no way of seeing if you're gonna have stuff like that i think it's good to foreshadow that there is a trap there having dead bodies or spots of blood in areas i think is gives players a tell that maybe there's something here and also throwing those in as kind of red herrings that every now and then if possible so i hope you found this stuff useful guys have a good day all right Alright, I guess that's the rest of the video, fellas. If you have any questions, please comment down below. I hope you like my video. If you want to see more of this stuff, please uh, subscribe. I hope you guys uh, have a good game next time you play, and keep your shield arm strong, alright?